Hey everyone, welcome back to our at home lab. Today I'm gonna to go over some procedures for how to germinate seeds in your home for scientific experiments. Germinating seeds is really easy and it's great to do it with the procedure I'm gonna show you instead of using soil so that you can control your variables a little bit more if you're doing experiments. So let's get started. So the procedure I'm gonna show you today involves using some filter paper, but you can also use paper towels. I'm gonna to have Petri dishes, but you can also use a small dish. Tupperware like this, it's been clean, works really, really well if you're germinating seeds at home. Um, or you can just use a small plate or something else to put your seeds in. Now, um, you also are gonna use your seeds. Um, I'm gonna use these fast plant seeds. These are leftover from a lab from last year. We're probably gonna be working with radish seeds in a lot of experiments this year, but this really can work for a lot of different types of seeds. So whatever seeds you have, you can use to do this germination. Like I said, we aren't going to be germinating seeds in soil because this way we can guarantee, we can find out what happens to each of our seeds, we can guarantee germination a little bit better, we control for a few more variables. So I'm going to put this soil to the side, but you can also do germination in your home with soil if you have some too. Um, I'm also going to be using a little pipette, but if you don't have something like this or a dropper at home, what you can use is just some small measuring tools from your kitchen. So if you have these half teaspoon or teaspoon uh, scoops, you can use those just as easily. All right, so we're gonna take our first dish and I'm gonna take this deep one here and I'm gonna set this aside. Um, next, I'm gonna take my filter paper and this is already cut into circles, which is good, and I've cut up the first piece. But I want to cut a strip and it's gonna be about one centimeter wide and eight centimeters long, but it can vary. All right, so now I'm gonna pray, place about three centimeters worth, and again, you can estimate this, into my first Petri dish. And then I'm gonna take some water and I'm gonna add about two or three drops to this just to make sure that the paper stays in place for right now. So we can see that that's kind of sticking that into the Petri dish so it doesn't move anywhere. All right, next I'm gonna take another piece of filter paper or a circular paper towel, whatever fits inside your dish, and I'm gonna place that in here and you can tap down a little bit to make sure it stays and now I want to pour water into here to thoroughly saturate my filter paper so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my dropper and I'm gonna drop around getting this nice and again if you have measuring tools other than a dropper what you can do is just get one of your smaller measuring tools and add water a little bit at a time you really don't want to get too much here you want to drown this paper but you want to make sure that you have enough to really saturate your dish. So I'm going to keep doing this here until we're totally saturated. All right, looks pretty good to me. If there's any excess water, so I can see I have a little bit at the top here, I can pour that out. But I think this is going to be good for right now because when I rotate it, it really is not a lot of excess water that's on the top. So now I'm going to take my seeds and I'm going to evenly space them out. For my seeds to germinate. Now if you're doing an experiment with uh, different types of seeds or many different seeds, what you can do is write on this paper before you wet it and so that way you can keep track of what is on your petri dish. Um, I had a lot fewer seeds than I thought in these leftovers so I only have two here and these are really tiny. Um, but you could probably put about 10 seeds on this petri dish and have plenty of room for whatever experiments you're going to do. Now if I have a petri dish, what I'm going to do is place it over top of my seeds and I'm going to fill another dish with some water. So again, if we're using um, a Tupperware, we can do this too. You just might want to make your filter paper strip a little bit longer. So I'm going to take the bottom half here and put it right next to it. And I just want to make sure I fill it with as much water as it will take to cover up the bottom of my dish. But um, I'm using the pipette just so I don't put too much in here because we probably want to move this to another location before we finish. So if it's overflowing, you might spill the water and that is not gonna be good. <laughs> um, so you wanna be pretty careful when you're moving these or get these set up in a place that you want to store them. All right, that's pretty good to me. Now we're gonna place this extra end of our filter paper in here. And through capillary action, what this is gonna do is keep this part of our seed germination saturated. So it always has access to water and it's not going to dry out. So the goal here is to kind of minimize this extra filter paper that's exposed to the air so it's not gonna dry out too much. Um, but we can also leave this um, capped too. I would recommend um, putting a lid on it. And if you, again, you're doing this with another dish, you can just cover it uh, very gently, it doesn't have to be sealed shut on top. 
So next up, we're going to carefully place both of these, these dishes under a good light source. So this could be by a window that you keep open. This could be under a kitchen light that's on for most of the day. And you just want to make sure it's exposed to light for most of the day. So probably about a 12 to 10 hour period during the day. And when you are transporting this, again, it's very common that this piece of filter paper can break off. So you just wanna make sure that you're very careful when you move it, and if it does break, you can just replace it with another piece of paper. Keep an eye on the water in this dish, and if it dries out, you can add more, and hopefully this dish will stay saturated throughout the duration of your germination. Check back in a few days. Every plant has different germination periods, but hopefully you'll be able to see um, the plants start to sprout. And after that, you can collect your data or you can plant them to continue your experiment. You can also do other types of experiments with the germination method like this, exposing them to different conditions within the Petri dish. So we'll talk about that in another video. Thanks for watching.